Promotional copies of God of War were provided by Sony Interactive Entertainment. What's good, everybody? Welcome to your special edition of the What's Good Games podcast. That's right. This is the God of War spoiler cast. Oh, my God. So exciting, right, you guys? Yes, very, very exciting. Oh, great. I have things. Are you have things to say? We all have things to say. We well, do. It's yes. true. So we were originally supposed to be getting um, Mr. Corey barlog in but unfortunately his schedule uh did not line up with ours in uh the way that it needed it to for him to come by the studio but uh we do want to give uh another nod to playstation for providing us with free copies of god of war to play ahead of launch now it's post-launch you guys are here clearly we don't need to tell you that there's going to be spoilers in the spoiler cast right uh -uh. i hope not uh -uh. <laughs> i hope that that's <laughs> i hope that's understood thing. if you have not yet finished the full campaign and the secret ending to God of War, you probably don't want to be here. Or maybe you don't care about finding it out. You just don't have time. You don't want to finish it. And you want everything spoiled for you. Because we're going to talk about it all. Um, so I don't even know. Where do you want to begin? It's, it's There's a lot. There's a lot to go there's through. A lot. So I found an article on, I think it was Game Ranks. I'll find this. And it was the top spoilers from God of War. So we can kind of go through those. Okay, okay, that sounds great. First one, the stranger turns out to be Balder. Um, I don't, I don't think that that was like too shocking. Yeah, to be fair, I mean, once I I did have to kind of like go back and read about who the hell Balder was because I was yeah. like, that is Balder. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I, yeah. I, I should have brushed up on my Norse mythology before playing this game, but I did not. Um, I started reading, like, wiki articles halfway through the game yeah. so that I could be like, wait, who are these people? What did they do? Because I kind of only know things from Avengers and, like, the Marvel Universe and that mm. Thor and that oh. Odin. So. Yeah, that was a big wake-up call for me, like, realizing that all of the characters that you think you know from Thor, the Marvel series, are not the characters in actual Norse mythology. Yeah. Like, that was not, my bad. I'm not familiar with those movies at all, so to me revelation that it's balder i'm like okay but i guess for a lot of people that was a really huge fucking deal and i'm like i can understand that if that's your jam if you like the norse mythologies then that's the thing um the other one is who the witch turns out to be oh uh, yes freya and her whole story you mean the you mean that she turns out to be balder's mother balder's mother and yeah. her whole story and yeah that whole story arc was interesting i never really trusted freya from the get-go I, I some I mean I didn't think she, she was, was trustworthy. I see I didn't think so. I thought oh. she was a little too good to be true in the sense that she was super motherly. She was very caring. I liked her too much. I'm like something you're too perfect of a character. There's gonna be some shit wrong with you. See, you know I didn't think about Freya that way at all. The thing that was surprising to me about her when we discovered it was that um, she clearly was some kind of a witch, but that I didn't realize that she was gonna be Odin's wife. That to me was like whoa. Yeah, I was more shocked about her. Well, not shocked, but I was more I thought the reveal of her being Baldur's mother was more interesting than the fact that she was married to Odin. Um, But I think that and then and that's when I did start to look up. I was like, wait, is this like, is this real? Is this how this really went down? And I think it's it's not technically like I think the person Odin. they took some creative liberty. Yes. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, So this is not obviously like a one to one. North mis Norse mythology, and I keep saying the word Norse, and it's hard to say. Norse, I keep, like North, I have like a weird lisp when I say it's it. Like warm it's wind, very strange. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I again, I thought she was too. I don't trust anyone in video games. But it made sense to me because because of how maternal she was, and like she kind of was basically saw Atreus and was like, my boy, you know, like she just I think wanted to feel that again and like feel needed by someone because she's been rejected by her son Balder like since she cast that spell on him to protect him from everything yeah I think the first real sign that I was like okay bitch you're hiding something was when is it the mistletoe that the, the Atreus, arrows the mistletoe arrows that yeah. Atreus brings back he gets from Sindri and she freaks out and she's like oh my god you gotta throw these away and I was like why are you freaking? I thought it was interesting that Kratos was down for it he was just like do what she says I mean, she did act a little crazy, and I do it's think true. he, like, stuck his hand. Yeah, I see what you're saying. He did act a little protective, but he did, like, put his hand in front of Atreus. I'm like, yeah, this bitch is, like, on something. Something is wrong with her. And then we find out, obviously, later in the fight 
that's the one thing that can break Baldur's. The spell that Freya cast. So, so it, I thought that was interesting because it is actually true. Or that that's very um correlated to the Norse mythology of it. And I accidentally found this out before this happened in the game because I was looking whoops, up whoops. Magni and Modi, um, who are Thor's sons who are in this game. And I was like, oh, you know what? I kind of like just want to like learn a little bit more about them, see what their deal is. And then somehow stumbled upon the mistletoe killing Balder and was like, oh. And but then I was like, oh, that's what those arrows are. Oh, OK. And I texted you about this when yeah, I figured yeah, it I out. And I was like, oh, and he's still got the mistletoe part on. Like, So I knew all of this was coming, right? Like mm-hmm. when when Atreus is um, binding for his quiver snaps and then uh, Kratos fixes it with that green uh arrow it's kind of like loading the gun in the second act right to be fired in the third Mm -hmm. um and so i just thought that was really interesting i'm like oh no okay i kind of get it i know where this is going a little bit and you were like it's not quite what you think yeah Yeah. when you texted me i i I didn't want to quite tell you how it was going to go down because i completely forgot what those green arrows were made out of Mm -hmm. and so like when the mistletoe i don't think they said he, no, they, he just was like, these are cool arrows. Sindri tells you when he gives them to you what they are. He does say mistletoe? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Sh- I, I don't remember. I'm pretty I confident, confident that, that he does. I just think the um, back green. I was like, we oh. could look it up yeah. to be sure. But um, I thought that he announced right away that like when he handed him, oh, okay. these are like my special mistletoe arrows. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but I didn't think of it. You know, like in the moment when Kratos... Or not when Kratos, but when Freya is confiscates like the arrows and Kratos just so willingly lets her. I just assume it's because, you know, she helped them and they kind of owe her because they hurt her pig or whatever. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, and that he was just like arrows are arrows. It's fine. Yeah. And I think always in the back of his mind, Kratos is like, listen, like these arrows aren't going to make or break our chances for survival. I'm fucking Kratos. Except they <laughs> do. They yeah. really kind of do in the end. Yeah, it's true. I thought it was interesting in. Norse. Yeah. North. 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 Mythology. It sounds like what Freya does is she has every object in the world make a pact to not hurt Balder, except yes. for the humble mistletoe. And then they're like, it's just mistletoe. Like, what could possibly go wrong? Right. It's- LOL, 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 LOL. LOL. And then the, the actual tale is <laughs> Loki. So, Loki. Well, okay. 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 we'll, we'll I'm, get I'm, there. I'm almost done. Okay. Um, but it feels like in God of War, like we were saying, they tweaked it a little bit because. Kratos couldn't hurt, nothing could hurt and did Kr- Kratos didn't make that pact how it's, does that I mean it's mythology it gets a little fuzzy I understand but I think it was more I mean yeah the way it plays out in the actual tales is different um yeah. I think what they kind of did was like oh she yeah I don't know yeah I don't know but anyway so obviously when Balder yeah, punches it's... Atreus the spell's broken that he can actually kill Balder uh what did you ladies think of Freya's reaction like, the fact that she was like, kill me, son. I'm so sorry. Kill me. I'll happily die by your hands. I'm not surprised by that because yeah. I think that that's the very, like, parental quality that, mm-hmm. like, parents will absolutely die for their kids. And I, I mean, Kratos even reflects that in the conversation that he and Atreus has. And when Atreus is like, you know, would you, would you, like, die for me? And he's like, if it meant that you would live, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I thought that that was a rare touching moment because even though it's, semi-obvious that of course Kratos loves and cares for his son because he's very protective of him throughout the whole game he never like overtly says it really ever he's not like I love you boy oh you know? no, no. <laughs> I right? love boy. the but, fact that he calls him boy like yeah. is just funny to me because I'm like if I ever accidentally have a kid I can't imagine being like boy like or like <laughs> girl or like just <laughs> thing like come here entities read me a story boy here are some runes <laughs> yeah i think also it was a very very different historical period right where it's not like father Spartan, and son right? were meant to like yeah. father and son weren't meant to be all like warm and mushy together no, no. Well, know? Martin's died. it's not only that well, we um because so, somebody that i was i don't remember who i was talking to but they were playing the game and they're like i find it weird that um how cold kratos is to his son and i'm like Except like it, it no. the the story makes sense because yeah. it they allude to the fact that this is really the first time Kratos is even spending time with his son. Like he's around sort of, but he, it sounds like Kratos kind of comes and goes as he pleases. And he was mostly raised by his mother. So 
this is sort of like I feel almost awkward for Kratos and he doesn't really know how to act. Well, yeah, not only that, he's keeping this huge secret from his kid. Like, hi, you don't really know me. And how do you breach that topic? It's not something you have over the casual dinner table. So I think I mean, we can get into this in a little bit, too. After he finally reveals like what's going on, you can just tell that he has this weight lifted off of his shoulders. And Atreus asks, asks a super cute question like what is it can i fly or can i turn into an animal or yeah. something like that that was one of my favorite yeah. moments Powers like once I he fi- finds out he's a god and and when kratos is like can you turn into an animal <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> is that really the first thing that you thought of when i told you that you're part god and i'm like so yeah cute. he's like 10 yeah i would probably you know? think the same thing like what magic things can i do can i fly yeah no 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 you can't, no, no, you can't, can't fly. fly so going back <laughs> so. to freya a little bit do you think because she obviously was very very upset and she's like i'm gonna curse you to the day you die that was a really chilling speech yeah, that was insane because she is so maternal and warm and fuzzy. But the way and she, then she just said cold. it and delivered that, cold. it looks like in classical Norse mythology, she's responsible for Baldur returning after Ragnarok. So we'll see if they follow through with that. Baldur's coming back? What? Bum, bum, bum. Baldur, everyone's favorite psychopath. Right. I mean, I do kind of feel like he's unkillable, well, right? The, they kind of well, set him up to be the guy, the person you can't kill. That's, I mean, that is how it is. But I also think it's interesting to make, to me, maybe it's just because of what he's trying to do with Kratos and Atreus, like trying to hunt them down. But in in Norse land, like he's supposed to be the most well loved god. Like people really like him. He's supposed to be a nice dude. And I'm like, really? Yeah, I'm not this this guy. Like I don't. Uh, all you see him be is angry and like mm. kind of a dick. So I just thought that that was interesting. Being like. But the only person that really loves you, Balder, is your mother, and you're trying to kill her. So oh, yeah. maybe you should rethink well, your strategy. But, did, but <laughs> I would like to know, like, I would love to see, like, how Balder was before the spell she put on him. Mm-hmm. Like, what kind of a person he was. Because in the Norse mythology, like, history of Balder as a character, he's supposed to be, like, this really sunshiny, happy, positive yeah. person. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, but I want like that in God of War. I want them to like flashback. Mm. And I know mm-hmm. I want to know why that she cast that on in the first place. Cuz she didn't want to lose him. She didn't want to have to go through typical overprotective mom. Yeah. I mean, is that <laughs> Like was is that normal sick, no. or was she just like one day, "Hey, I have an idea." I think she clearly had and even she said this, like the best of intentions, right? Like she did not think out the consequences at mm-hmm. all she was just thinking i'm protecting my baby nothing's gonna happen to him i'm always gonna have him because she herself is immortal right yeah she's god so it's like she's like i just want well, my I mean, you can it's kratos has proven you can kill gods yes <laughs> um and so i think she clearly just wanted to do what was best and did not anticipate like these horrifying like mm-hmm. after effects yeah so the next big one, obviously, Atreus is Loki, Dun, half done. god, Dun. half giant, little child. Oh, crazy town. So the Loki re- reveal was really interesting because I think that we all assumed that Loki would be like Thor's age, right? Because right, because they're supposed to be brothers. So I know nothing like, about Loki. Like half brothers or whatever. Although that might, I can't know if that, I don't know if that's true in actual Norse so or if who, that's just the Avengers, the Marvel. So what, yeah, what I don't is, think they're actual brothers in Norse in I don't Norse think they are either, actually, now that I think about it. Uh, let me look, look it up specifically. But, but um, yeah, because at the end when Atreus is, you know, it said my name was Loki and I say, I think that's really impactful, but I know nothing about this Loki character in any of the mythologies so i didn't understand the impact of that i do know because i've read a little bit about loki like his mother or his father was supposed to be a giant his mother was murmur mur, mur. like it kind of was like maybe a goddess maybe a something <laughs> right um, and mur, mur, mur. A murmur. <laughs> but what i found really interesting about the norse loki is that he is the father of the world serpent and he is the father of Fenrir, who is a giant wolf that kills right. Odin. Mm-hmm. Um, and he does serp- seem to like wolves. <laughs> yeah. And doesn't the world serpent at one point say that Treus looks familiar? Yes. So he who does. the fuck knows? <laughs> huh. Huh. Ooh, also- the world, so the world serpent knows something. Oh, did you, so the Loki description I found yeah. here mm-hmm. um, is Loki, if this is right from uh, Wikipedia, often angelicized, angelicized? Anglicized? Anglicized? Uh, oh, that's a... Uh, I'm not going to pronounce that. Is a god in Norse mythology and is the, in some sources the son of Farbauti and Lofi. 
the brother of Hal Blindy and <laughs> By Bilister. I don't know how to say. Are they giants where or is gods? Ma- where is Mamir when you need him? I know, right? Um, <laughs> by the uh, the Yotan Ang- Angraboa. Oh my god, this is, I love, this is like I love our you names. all of these Lo- names. Loki is the father of Hell, yes. the wolf Fenrir, and the world serpent Jormungandr. Jormungandr. Just like uh, Steinar just said, uh, but his wife, um, his wife Sijin. Loki is the father of Narfi and or Nari. And by the stallion, Loki is the mother giving birth in the form of a mare to the eight-legged horse Slepnir. So there's a lot of weird things in Norse mythology, especially Loki. No Loki shit, seems to right? Loki seems to birth <laughs> all of these animals, which is crazy to me. Okay, so it's, it's- do you think Loki as the name was like given as a tribute or do you think like this is supposed to be Loki? I have no idea. It's very strange. I have no idea at all. Yeah. It says Loki's relation with the gods varies by source. Loki <laughs> sometimes assists the gods and sometimes behaves in a malicious manner towards them. He's a trickster. Loki is a shape shifter and in separate incidents he appears in the form of a salmon, <laughs> the fish, a mare, a fly, and possibly an elderly woman named Pock. Okay, that the last one's amazing. But the so I mean that's kind of cute that they put that in like to, that his first question is oh, can I turn into an animal? Uh, uh, so he can turn into an animal. Maybe so maybe he that's can. like Kratos' reaction was that. It wasn't like how oh, you're being a cute No, kid. I think he was confused. I, I think, think Kratos doesn't know, no, right? Oh, he doesn't know you're right at that point. He, he doesn't, doesn't know. I mean, I don't think he knows that much about Norse mythology in general. Like he knew his gods. No, that's right. He didn't know Faye was a giant either. Yeah. Yeah, Uh, because like he so at at the end, obviously, he says, you know, the whole time I Mm. thought they were always coming for me when in reality they were coming for Faye. Yeah. 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 Um, And I it's not clear that Kratos even knows anything about Odin. I feel like Mimir is the one who really like kind of informs him about who Odin is, right. where, what Odin's place is, who Thor is, and all these other people. I also think we need to back up a second because I don't. We talked about him being Loki. I don't know that we talked, mentioned the fact that his gi- mom was a giant. Did we say that? We definitely talked okay. about. Okay, are we sure we said that? Well, I mean, because like we, we know, but yeah, I wasn't we, sure if we said that explicitly. Because right didn't now. we talk about the fact that uh, she's not a giant giant? No, we talked that about that in inside the, your house. Inside your house uh, before we started recording, you yes. guys. Okay, so yeah, I thought that because. So I just want to make sure we covered, like, it wasn't yeah. those things where we thought we talked about it and then we didn't. Because we talked about it, but not during this recording session. Yeah. Um, I thought it was interesting how, I kind of wished that we had seen other giants not be giant. Because anything that we've seen so far in that game, I mean, the World Serpent, obviously, massive. Then you see the dead giant on the map uh, in Midgard. Thamur. Giant. Mm-hmm. Then when you go to Jotunheim and... You like are looking at the top of this mountain, all these dead giant giants. And so and then to be like, oh, mom was a giant and you didn't know. I'd be like, and I know that not all gi- they do mention because mm. that's what you guys had talked about. Hashtag that, not all giants. Hashtag not all giants <laughs> are giants. But I kind of <laughs> wish like maybe they had alluded to that even in the Jotunheim, like little uh, as they're walking up that mountain. And like because even the sculptures there were really big. Like the the faces and everything was like massive people. Yeah, I I don't know giant lore or mythology, but I didn't know that not all giants were giant as, as well. I had no clue. Giant, I mean, the words giant, it like I, w- I just went through like okay. this whole like Teach where me. the word came from. The actual like Jotunheim and those kinds of things, it means devourer. It doesn't actually mean giant. Big. But then as you've like tra- as you translate down through English or whatever, it then be- it became that. Mm. Um so that's why hashtag not all giants. <laughs> um, <laughs> because really, really it's not about their size, it's about the fact it's about their relationship with the gods and how the devout like the gods or the the giants, quote unquote, keep the gods in check. Like they are the ones that kill the gods and start Ragnarok, all that kind of stuff. Goodness. So, yeah, that whole scene, you're about to spread the ashes, and Atreus places his hand on the wall. This this mural makes itself apparent. Walls crumble, and then they're like, oh, my God, Mom was a giant. She knew everything that was going to happen. Wowzers. Um, and then as Atreus is getting all excited and saying, hey, we're almost at the end, a cloth, a, a strip of fabric blows in the wind blows majestically. The wind. And then you see this depiction of Atreus cradling a hurt assuming hurt Kratos hurt slash maybe and something is either coming out of Atreus's mouth or something is coming in his mouth yeah (laughs) (laughs) um so I (laughs) I also like 
the thing that I saw, and maybe this is what you just said, and I didn't hear, was that like there was like it looked like Kratos was like sick or dead on the ground, yeah. and he was holding yeah. him, right? Yeah, it looked like he's cradling him as you would cradle someone you love that who just died. Yeah, right. Not that I've ever done that, but so, uh, so part of me, part of me thought that maybe Kratos was going to like be mortally wounded in some way at the end of this game. That's what I I was like. Oh, so, so as you approach Jotunheim and you go up, like. Kratos says something about we need to go while I still have my strength. And I was like, oh, shit. Are you about to, like, collapse and die at the top of this mountain? Was this after he just and fought Balder? Yes. No, I thought this was after was, they scattered the ashes. Or right no, before he says, they scattered. he says it right before they go up to, like, the temple. Okay, this was after the Balder fight. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and so, I, and then when that thing, like, billows up and you see him, I was like, oh, my are they like going to go to, is, is he going to spread his ashes and then be like, and here I die, boy. Boy. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but then yeah. no, that doesn't, that doesn't happen. And Andrea and I talked about this, I think about a week ago. It was when I was here last for the State of Decay 2 event. And we we're talking about that. And we're, we were worried, you know, is Kratos going to die? And so if, here's what I was thinking. If Faye saw this coming and she puts it there and now doesn't Kratos at some point in the game say multiple times fate is something the gods believe in or something foolish. Basically, the gods are dumb and they believe in fate, but I don't believe in fate. I think he says something along those lines. Sounds like Kratos. He says he says something and then uh, uh, Atreus says something and then um, I think Kratos says, what do you what do I always say about fate? Right. And then Atreus is the one that's like, oh, the gods always lie and fate isn't real or something. Something like that. And so what I'm wondering is, <coughs> I don't know if they would ever kill off <coughs> Kratos, but I could see, you know, this is part of the prophecy. This is what's supposed to happen. And Atreus being like, no, for that. You said fate is bullshit. And then they somehow. What, wait, what is, what is this what, I don't know what that accent what's, was. What's this accent? <laughs> I like he's like a that's, British. That's the the Atreus that births the serpent after he's a badass. That's a, it. Kind of looks like he's vomiting a snake. So I can't see him killing off Kratos. What about you, ladies? I think they could, but not while Atreus is still a boy. Like Atreus well, needs to a, kind of grow up a little bit more. Sure. And there's also the thing about you know Ragnarok and the the, serp, the serpent has been sent back in time. So is it possible that they could send? Kratos back in time through the events that happen in the next game and so maybe he won't die I don't know anything's possible I just can't see him killing him games <laughs> I just can't seem to kill him off I, it's video really, games based on mythology so yeah that, that I really love yeah. is how how we are so invested in the story that we've like sought out details but we don't know where the liberties have been been taken and you know that's what's exciting about what Corey and the team are doing from a writing perspective saying like hey we're gonna base this in like these real names and these real places and these real mythology mythologies but we clearly need to put original content inside and somehow weave this greek Mm storyline into you know this new place that he is um and i really want to know like who else in the world like knows about the greeks and knows about like the greek gods that kratos has had this history with because Mimir clearly Mimir like is like hey I recognized you know who you were right away where you come from and Faye or not Faye Freya right well they, she, I Freya think she just knows he's a god yeah I don't think she, she knows, knows who specifically right because like Mimir very clearly calls him out as the ghost of Sparta yeah uh-huh, right uh-huh. in one point also can we talk about Mimir for a minute yeah he was like the my favorite part of the game yeah he was fantastic Hey, uh, the scene where you meet him and he's still in the tree and then you cut his head off. I was like, we're not actually going to cut his head off, are we? Because <laughs> um, I d- remember a moment in the trailer where in one of the initial trailers where Kratos is holding his head up to the serpent. And now obviously we know that that's when they were talking to each other. But I thought that we were like bringing this head as like a trophy to uh, the serpent. Because uh, I had no idea. Right? You just see like a head. Yeah, yeah, of course. So you assume it's like you've murdered this person. And you're like delivering the you're head like, hey, as a like, proof or something. Yeah. Did not realize that head was going to be with you the whole game talking the whole time. Oh my God, and so he's good. But, so yeah. So maybe you're, how, you, like a third in the game. Would you say you get him? Ish? Yeah, like, it's, I'd say it's earlier than that. Maybe. Isn't it? Okay. Yeah, I guess. I guess so. We have to get to the top of the mountain, the first mountain. Right. And then you're like, um, LOL. Jacob. And then it's like, LOL, of course it's not the real thing. I think that was my only gripe with the story. And it's not really a gripe because like, I just feel like every video game uses that thing of it's like, this is our goal. The fake LOL, out. LOL, yeah. no, it's not. And like yeah. you as the player already know that that's not your goal because of how quickly you get there. Um, but the 
the characters don't know. And it's just like, it's just so, it's just every video game yeah. that it bought, like it, that bothered me slightly, but obviously the way that they've done the character development and everything else, it, it didn't You know, I have to say though, matter. if someone were to, were to tell me that the entire point of God of War is to spread these ashes, I would have been like, nah, because I kind of thought for a minute, okay, we're here, then Atreus is like, then what? And Kratos said, we're going to go home and we're going to work, you're going to train or something. I'm like, okay, and then like the real story is going to happen. But no, it was all about spreading the ashes and being cock blocked along the way. I'm not complaining about that, but I, it was a little surprising to me. I like though that the overall like arc had a definitive goal that wasn't um, that that was tangible. You know, it was this idea that they had this really emotional moment at the very beginning of the game where you're burning Faye's body and you're collecting mm-hmm. the firewood to make her pyre and. You know, this his son is dealing with the death of his mother. I mean, this is like some really heavy emotional shit, like at the very, very top mm-hmm. of the game. And that like it means so much to him that they're going to go spread her ashes because it's her last wish no matter what. And I think that that sense of honor and that sense of commitment and duty is Family. something that's so lacking in our current culture mm-hmm. that it was it was really touching to see that they were like, this is what she wanted. And no matter what, no matter what kind of crazy gods or enemies or undead things or whatever stands in our way, we're going to, to deliver it. her ashes to the highest peak in all the realms. Right. Yeah. I really liked that. No. Yeah. I, I actually didn't mind that, that the, the base journey was so simple in, in, in that sense. Like, yeah, you are literally just going to like spread her ashes. Um, I guess what I I wasn't sure of, because you know you're always like, oh, I think I can figure this out. And then you're like, nope. Um, is like I thought you were gonna get to the top of the mountain, you were going to spread her ashes, and then I thought like Odin or someone was gonna come and be like, Motherfuckers, what's, what's up? up? Him yeah. or Thor, because they they were the ones whose names were mentioned most of all, and then they do not show up in this game. Um the fact that Thor doesn't show up is shocking to me. Because like, of how frequently he's mentioned. Well, you kill his two sons. I know. Yeah. And he's just like, that's fine. <laughs> I can make more. No big deal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, the thing more. is, like, he kind of kills <laughs> kind of kills one of them himself. Um, Thor, like, beats the shit out of... Oh, God. I'm not... I'm going to forget which one it was. Because they're both named with Magni? M's. Magni? No. No, you kill... Oh, fuck, Modi? I don't, remember. I don't know. One which. of them. I Yeah, because like we've come across him and we see that he's like super beaten and he's like and he's like thor blames me for the other one's death and then look little baby loki's like stab yeah and you're like oh oh jesus like can we talk about that moment for a second because that was the most uncomfortable i think i've been in a video game in a really long time when loki kills it's not Magnia even just Modi? it's not even like, just the death where he stabs him in the neck. It's that whole lead up. Oh, oh and the way he's acting. Yeah. The yeah. way that he talks to Sindri yes. at the at the blacksmith, the way that he's talking to Kratos. It like it got in this really, really uncomfortable place and I was like, I don't like this at all. I don't like how he's talking to him, what's oh. going on. And when I just oh. assume when he goes through his punk ass bitch face. Oh, I was fucking livid. And yeah. I, it was so brilliantly well done though because i was legit frustrated because i was like this is my fucking kid you know and i think that spoke a lot to kratos as a character he's the god of war he's full of anger and rage but he was able to contain himself pretty darn well so i think it was right after he did something and kratos bitched him out and it was when he was being a little douche and you i commanded uh, atreus to shoot an arrow and he's like whatever and I was like, oh, you did not just yep. do that. Because I, I, yep. felt, I felt uncomfortable, like you were saying, Andrea, to ask him to shoot a puzzle for me. I'm like, I, I'm mad at you, but I need your help for this. I'm like, if you flip me in the ass, he's like, whatever. And I was like, oh, you did not just do that. No, that's how I was. I, I agree. <gasps> like, I was, I don't know if I was uncomfortable so much as angry. Yeah. Like, because I, for the most part, I mean, there, Atreus is annoying at times because he's a 10 year old boy. Or however old, you know, that ish age. <laughs> and I just think that they are naturally annoying at that age. <laughs> but all, but all, all kids are. We were annoying at yeah, that age. Let's yeah. be but honest. But for the most part, he's an oh, like he's mostly just like life is cool. Like, look at all these fun things. Let's help people. Like he's got such yeah. a, a happy ish demeanor for the most part that when he changes to be kind of surly and like, I'm a god and therefore I'll do what I want. I'm not listening not to anything you say, dad. Problems. Yeah. He basically goes through puberty in like two seconds. Two seconds <laughs> of puberty, two seconds. It's true. And yeah, I, that, that, go ahead. 
Oh, I was just going to say, yeah, it did remind me of, you know, like a teenager being yes. insolent and talking back and having that moment. But like it w- it happened so quickly that and like he got so dark. It wasn't just like sass. It was like dark. No, he know? does. He, and I, what's interesting there is like, I wonder if that alludes to the fact that like he is supposed to be Loki and he does technically have a bit of that darkness. Like I think of Loki as a very like light and dark character. Like he's got yeah. both, both mm-hmm. elements in him and has the potential to kind of be a selfish dickhead, but also has like the potential to do nice things. So um, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe it was just, they were going for like a teenager or surly thing, or maybe it was a, a hint. Well, at if you think that. about it, he, his whole life he's been weak because he's been sick. He didn't know he why was, he was sick. He didn't know he was half God, half giant. I'm sure that's not a fantastic combination for your psyche. Um, and he's probably felt weak the majority of his life. And he finally is like, hey, actually, guess what? You're a god. And he's like, holy shit, I'm a god. And I think it's that rush of power that he probably felt. And he's like, yeah, I'm a freaking badass now and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And then Kratos, thankfully, kind of put him in his place real quick. The power goes to and, – and, and it's probably understandable that the power would go to your head, especially at that age. And I understand why Kratos didn't tell him for so long. Um, because to know that – and it's not that nothing can hurt you, because, again, we've established you can kill gods. But most things probably won't hurt you. And that's, yeah, like, exactly. Got to be a weird power trip to be like, wait a minute. I can almost do whatever I want. Yeah. And, like, yeah. And, and to be, and when you are that age and that young, you have, like, you don't have the same type of control over your emotions or over your behavior as you do when you are older. Um, so I I think it was really smart that they did that because that is, I think, true to what would like, I think that's what would happen. Right. If you were like, right. Hey, kid, you've got unbelievable powers. They'd be like, well, then fuck all of you, you know? Well, and they also they also <laughs> hinted at it. Right. So in the very like first troll fight in the game, you know, he after the troll is dead and on the ground, you know, um, Atreus goes and it's like, stab, 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 stab. Oh, stab. exactly. And, and Kratos is and the, this is like our first like glimpse of who Atreus is and what he could become. And, you know, you think about Kratos in the sense that he's got all of this crazy rage and these anger issues, like, to the max, and going, like, how much of Kratos's rage is going to be inside Atreus. And then it kind of, like, that was, like, just did just a glimpse. And, like, the sickness part, I couldn't tell if it was, like, meant to be mental sickness or meant to be like a physical ailment but then it manifests so physically yes later in the game that um i was just confused all around about what kind of a character or what kind of a god atreus is you know mm-hmm. i still am a little confused about it i mean i don't think it's quite i they never really dive into exactly what yeah. like he's obviously very good with language and they they do hint at that and they're like well you can kind of like pick up on things mm-hmm. um very quickly boy Boy. language and lore <laughs> language and lore um yeah. obviously i'm like i he does he does have to have some form of like weirdo rageaholic do do we know why he has those runes on his skin were those why ever his tattoos or his tattoos whatever there do we know is i a- i also thought that was kind of interesting that he was tattooed at such an early age um balder is too um but i don't i don't know maybe it's just a thing that they do i have no idea yeah they don't really explain what the um what the tattoos are so not um, sure next thing the blades of chaos make a comeback oh my god that was- guys when that <laughs> happened i was like holy fucking shit this game's so good the way that they handled it too was really impactful mm-hmm. this idea that the only thing that could ever like get him to look at his past would be his the son. thought of him potentially losing his son mm-hmm. yeah yeah i thought that was really beautifully done Yeah, and I have only played, like I've said, most of the first God of War game, so I don't really have an attachment with the Blades of Chaos, but even myself, I was like, this is fucking amazing. It it was really cool. Yeah, I've not played God of Wars before, but but that whole scene, I was like, I was emotional, and I was like into it, and I was like, holy shit, this is crazy that he's like, I'm digging up my past, and like, we're gonna go, like, we're doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And again, like you said, only because Atreus um might die or like would die otherwise and and as he mentions multiple times like he would die for his son so yeah i like how they made it so that you had to use him in a specific area like going to helheim and saying like 
you could only like the blades of chaos will work here you can't really use your axe against the enemies it, here because they're all frozen yeah and <laughs> so like frozen. they not only did they expertly weave it into the narrative of the game but they wove it in from a gameplay perspective like so many things so well crafted in this game overall why we have such you know positive things to say is like they didn't just arbitrarily shoehorn it in for story right. and they didn't just arbitrarily shoehorn it in for combat they made it meaningful in both senses now i had been doing so much side content that by the time i got to the point this point of the story i had almost maxed out my skill tree so i was like hmm i feel like there's a lot more to go in the game (laughs) and then of course when you get the blades and like the whole new tree opens i was like oh okay now it makes sense yeah and i was like crap i've seen these vines around here now i have to try to remember where they were because i did all the side stuff too yeah no so that was um if i had to go back (laughs) <laughs> hindsight i wouldn't have done all the side content i did because i also had to like retrace my steps mm-hmm. i think what what in that sense the one thing i kind of wished that they had done um especially with the map is like allowed you to kind of mark it yeah it would have like, been stamp, nice like stamp, oh yeah that would have been like, great like, you can yeah. just like okay these things kind of like zelda does like you can just like put little stamps around mm-hmm. that would have been nice because like yeah if you if you did go explore and then there was a thing where like towards the end of the game i was texting you because i'm like I wanted to go back and try and do this dragon thing, but I don't remember where it was. And yeah. Like, and I'm trying. I'm just like going around the lake, like where the fuck was this dragon? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that's definitely. I feel like a, a valid criticism that if I wish that if you had come across it, it would appear on the map. Mm-hmm. Versus, like, I don't need them to like spell out for me on the map where everything is. I like the idea of like oh go over there and see what you find mm-hmm. but like if i've been there and i found the thing Put a little icon on there that says then, like, Here's then the they thing, should yeah. and like the undiscovered stuff that's on the map so um brit's been trying to watch me uh defeat the queen of the valkyries who i still as of this recording okay. have not been able to defeat um and i like will look through it like sections and be like okay well, like what do i have checked here how many ravens how many nornir chests and then it will say undiscovered but like one of the lines of undiscovered is either like a single raven that I didn't see. But I'm mm-hmm. like, I've, I've got plenty of other ravens. Just tell me that there's a raven in yeah. that section. Don't make me look up what I'm missing. Or that like it's like Queen of the Valkyries defeated is another undiscovered line. I'm like, well, you can put that she's there. I've clearly been fighting her for like five <laughs> hours. <laughs> Especially post credits, I feel like you know yeah. at least yeah. unlock it then because there you do want to go back. Um, speaking more on the Blades of Chaos, there are also hints to other God of War games. Now I'm not very familiar with God of War lore, but you do see Athena. There is the scene and of Zeus. Zeus. Um, what I did is when I was probably a few hours in, and you know the they're like the skeleton spirits or whatever they are. You the jogger. Find, yeah, on mm-hmm. the islands, and they're like, hey, oh, the, okay, yeah, the lost oh, souls, yeah, the yeah. lost yeah. souls, yeah, yeah. yeah. And for the most part, Kratos is like, this is dumb. Why are we wasting our time, boy? But if this is something you want to do, let's do it. But then there's one in particular where Kratos is like, I think we should help this guy out. And uh, Atreus is like, really? And Kratos says something along the lines of, you know, his men would have died for him. Something, something, something. And then I'm like, okay, I need to know where this motherfucker is coming from. So then I read the Wikipedia entries and then you learn oh, that he was Oh, yeah, the, the one with warrior. the three ships where you have to go clear out the Hellwalkers. I think that probably that was one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought that was really interesting. So I, I'm happy I took the time to read up on the lore and get a general understanding because some of the things Kratos said, I was like, oh, like that's why you wanted to help that thing out. There's a motivation that that's, ties back. Right. Or, you know, when Atreus is like, he killed his own father. Why would he do that? That's and a Kratos terrible, like, awful uh, thing. Uh, yeah. And Kratos <laughs> is like, dot, dot, dot. Well. I I still didn't quite understand why Athena showed up and that she was just there to haunt him. Athena was kind of the pusher throughout the whole yeah. thing. I thought maybe she would make another appearance, but at least we know she's still a thing. That well, can, and her storyline was kind of like left open ended right. at the end of God of War three, I believe. So it's like there when I originally went down to uh, Santa Monica Studios, um, people, a lot of people wrote in on Twitter or were like ask them about Athena. And I did. They said nothing. Ah. Um, they were like, we're not talking about Athena. Um, but clearly she makes an appearance in this game like very briefly. But they do have a history together. Yes. yes. It's a pretty intense history. And that's kind of the other interesting thing is there, there are two realms after you finish the game that you just don't have access to because Odin blocked you from visiting them. Yes. So is this going to be big chunks of DLC where we're going to figure this stuff out or is it going to be saved for a sequel? That's- I I, th- I think that 
um, Asgard is probably going to be a place that we don't see in DLC through this game. I think that that yeah. realm tower will probably just always be locked off because, quite frankly, we don't want to go there. Um, but the other realm, Vanaheim, is um, is something that I think would be really interesting to explore. I also would like to see them do more with like the um, the Elfheim realm, you know, with mm. the light elves. Yeah. I feel like there was a, a, a lot of potential to go see more stuff. From there, I don't want to go there. You don't like the fuck elves. Fuck the dark elves. You're not a fan. No, Dude, but like when you leave, the... you put the light elves in power. I know. It doesn't matter because the dark elves are still around. And they're still fucking your shit up. And I'm like, I hate you. I hate you so hard. Anytime I saw a dark elf, I was like, God damn it. I These did... guys are slippery little bastards. They are. But I did like how Atreus um, and Kratos had conversations where they were like, they questioned who was the real bad guy yeah. in mm-hmm. that war between the elves. They're like, well, you know, like who is... Like, oh, that's who is right. supposed to win? Because like, it's just, like perpetual war, you know, and Atreus is like, well, are the dark elves the bad guys? Or maybe it's the light elves that are. It's because of what the, so in after Alfheim, like you fight one yeah, dark yeah. elf boss. And after that, because um, Chris is like, what did he say, boy? Oops. And he's like, oh, he said, like, you've made a huge mistake, basically. Yeah. Not exactly that. but Which is like, you know, people would say that, but I feel like in a video game like this, it's more foreshadowing than. Yeah. And so that's when Atreus is like, wait, did we do the right thing? Because like, maybe, I don't know, maybe we didn't. Um, and it's like, at, you did what you needed to do in order to. Yeah. To progress. Mm-hmm. Like, that's kind of how the whole story is. It's just like. Kratos based and I kind of wonder so Loki as a character is supposed to be relatively selfish and I wonder if Kratos is sort of instilling that in him as you go along because he's always like don't bother helping other people like we're we are we have a journey boy like yeah. let's like stick to the path and go um and so I kind of wonder if like if that's gonna come back to bite him in the butt bite him in the butt bite him in the butt <laughs> punch her in the face bite me in the ass yeah. Yeah. <gasps> uh, okay, are you ladies ready <laughs> for your oh, song? For, that is my song. It's my number one hit. It's going to make us lots of money. That producer lady on SoundCloud needs to <laughs> give us lots of money for that, please. So good. <laughs> All right. Crazy theory time. Okay. 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 This is, again, this is on the same website that I need to pull up. The fact that Kratos might be the Norse guard, guard, <laughs> the Norse god of war tier is something the game seems to suggest several times. Tyr has a vase with Kratos on and some wine from his homeland, for example. He's also meant to be wise, peaceful, and it's clearly presented as everything Kratos is trying to be. He's also suspiciously nowhere to be seen in the game. Instead, instead, there are a lot of interesting clues. Tyr was a big friend of the giants, which you would be if your son was one. Tyr was also... Tyr also helpfully leaves a puzzle behind for Kratos that only Mimir can solve, almost as if Tyr knew he'd be there. Atreus also links the two gods at one point by saying that both Tyr and Kratos are good, unlike almost all of the other gods. So how could this be possible? When Mimir talks about how the events of Ragnarok sent the world serpent back in time, Kratos scoffs very noticeably. And not only does the world serpent mention someone looking familiar when they initially meet, but the true end of the game suggests Ragnarok is near. The events of that could see Kratos thrown back in time to eventually become Tyr in the past. That then opens up the possibility of God of War games set in Egyptian, Chinese, or Mayan cultures, as teased by director Corey Barlog. Hot damn! I don't... The, the fact that they're like, well, Tyr didn't show up in the game. Like, yeah, no shit, because they pr- like, pretty clearly say he's dead. Well, he's um, dead in present time. In present time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I... I never took like the fact that he had the Greek wine or whatever as as a hint that that's him. I took it as more because they talk about Tyr going like he went to other um, realms. realms and he went to other basically places of mythology. And so I just took that as like he kind of brought it back as like a like a souvenir. Mm-hmm. It was like, mm, get me, give me some of that Greek ass wine. The Greek ass wine. I know that was actually a really cute scene <laughs> where they were drinking the wine together. Yeah. And he's like, this is gross. Yeah. I remember drying wine. My dad gave me a sip of champagne when I was like 11. Um, and I was like, ugh, 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 ugh. And little did, did you know. know. Yeah. And now I know? can't stop drinking it, you guys. Mm-hmm. I Yeah, so who knows? Yeah, I mean, that'd be crazy if true. I mean, I think that's kind of I don't what know I was... if they need to be the same character or if he just is like, well, I'm, well, I'm Kratos has already kind of taken over someone else, right? Like he took over Ares' role in mythology yeah um I so love that theoretically yeah i guess he could i love that we're deep diving so much into it. i did not expect like god of war to have me thinking this much about the possibilities but i guess when you're dealing with mythologies it's kind of batshit crazy anyway i mean a lot of room. 
giving birth to a giant snake, a giant wolf. <laughs> Also, be birthing a horse that has eight legs. Yeah, wow. like yeah, the, crazy. Uh, the the list. The, <laughs> the list, list goes is pretty on and crazy. On. Yeah, um, I think so. What you were talking about Ragnarok, I think it's very clearly like um, because the start of Ragnarok in actual mythology does have to do with Baldur's death and the mistletoe. Um, so Loki killing Baldur, which he tech- kind of he did. kind of does. Like yeah. he def- he makes it possible to kill Baldur, uh, which Kratos then does on his behalf um but that then triggers the winter which they mention as soon as they step back out and they're like hey man uh just so you know <laughs> while you were in jotunheim um some some crazy ass shit went down here and it's very snowy and it's i can't remember the name I, of it i think he something but it's called final winter or something they they fast forwarded time by 100 winters i think is what happened because the time time moves differently in the different realms yeah. and i think that plays into it i don't know if it was that much but yes there's i thought it was I sorry made it sorry for the squeaks i'm adjusting my mic i'm adjusting my mic <laughs> <laughs> um, playing with it all all okay. shoot so all all of those those fine spoilers came from games radar plus uh, so Thank we haven't radar. mentioned the fact that you do technically see Thor in this game for yes. like half a second. The secret ending. Yeah. So when you go back home, which I only did because you told me. And then, so this was, this was also. And I only did that because Jeff Kanata told me. This was the funny moment where I was texting you. And so I'd finished the game and I was like, wait, where's my house? <laughs> like, oh, no. Wait, where do I live? I don't remember where I live. How? do i get home <laughs> i definitely had that moment of like there's literally shit. a majestic gateway titled home <laughs> but it was just like where am i looking for it on the map i don't know like it was yeah. just a weird thing where i kept thinking i'm like no that's freya's house where's my house because like, i i went to freya's way more than i obviously went back to, yeah. to mine um mm-hmm. so going home you then like take a nap have a nap fires in his house uh, <laughs> with your boy you're like all right we've had a long day let's go to bed uh and then it says years later but they look the exact same but they fine. look at, yeah which i was like this kid hasn't aged at all that seems a little funky uh then you know there's a was there a knock at the door or was it just like lightning crackling all around i can't remember there was a lot of lightning yeah it, it was just the the storm the, the storm that woke them up or, yeah okay but they get up they open the door shadowy figure in a hood there lightning crackling all around and then like the camera cuts back and the wind billows the cape and there's Mjolnir. Yes. Thor. Yes. Now is Thor going to be pissed off? Is Thor going to be like, yo, you killed my kids. I'm going to kill you. Or is he like, yo, bro, we got to set our differences aside. Oh, hell I don't no. want to die. There. Well, I- the, yeah. The first thing I thought of was like, yo, if Thor is waiting years later to make a confrontation, because he clearly knows where Kratos is because Balder found him. Right. Right. So, like, there's no way that Balder didn't report back and be like, I found the dude. Right? So, in my mind, they they weren't looking for Kratos necessarily. They were looking for. Right. No, but I'm saying, like, they had a crazy, crazy ass fight. Right. And then Balder leaves. Yes. And um, in this, like, clearly, like, it. Something was off, and obviously we, it ended up being a dream sequence, right? Right. Yeah. Um, but s- setting up that like Thor is going to come into play at some point, yeah. As we suspect, I also hope we see Odin at some point as well. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I left feeling conflicted by that scene because I yeah. I think I was just like ultimately mad that we didn't at least get a cut scene with Thor mm. at any point in the game because I'm like I'm still like how do you murder two gods that are the sons of this crazy violent god yep. that Mimir talks about the whole fucking game and then he never makes an appearance in he the like, game he like just doesn't care yeah that yeah no I agree and I also think I, I think that can't be I'm like there's no way that's years later I think they just maybe put that in to throw you I don't know because after it's that weird. they wake up and he says he says, I had a weird dream and Thor was in there. Thor yeah. came to our house. And I think how Kratos reacted, that was going to like, fuck, but we'll deal with it when it happens. Let's just carry on our merry way. And and like we're so his mother, I forgot her name. Faye. Faye um, was like a what, you know, whatever. She can like kind of see the future. Mm-hmm. Clearly she carved it all out on a wall. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then. So I'm wondering if like if little little young Loki is now starting to get those inclinations um now that he knows his true heritage uh, and so like that is you know him prophesizing what's to come although it was too little i wanted a little like tell me more i know oh i'm so excited for the next one yeah <laughs> it's, yeah just 
Wait five more years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a little while. Well, damn, that was a hell of a game. Yeah. That was that it game. was. It started a little slow for me. Again, I was very ill. So that's probably part that's of fine. it. But and uh, thematically it made a lot of the things I do appreciate the fact that they really try to tie gameplay things into the themes of the game. And what I mean by that is like like you'd mentioned with the Blades of Chaos, they weren't just like we here. feel like putting this in here, so let's throw them on in. Uh, there was a very clear purpose and direction for that. And I think also the beginning of the game where you're not like you're powerful because you're a god, but you're not like crazy powerful. Also, it does theoretically make sense because Kratos has been living just as like a regular dude for a very long time. And probably like if, if you don't use skills, you tend to like they get rusty. Don't so you got to kind of them. like exactly you got to gotcha. build it back up a little bit, which you do. And like. I played the game on normal and I found it like a little bit irritating in the beginning because I'm like, these wolves, the fuck, this, <laughs> <laughs> these elves, the fuck. <laughs> but once once I did get more of that God feeling, mm -hmm. I was like, OK, this feels really good. And especially by the time I had gotten to the Blades of Chaos, I was like, I am the best. This yeah. is the best. I love slicing people with these things. It the feels Blades so of Chaos good. Are very satisfying. I can't believe that you still haven't gone to the, all the Valkyries yet. I haven't gone to any of the I Valkyries. was motivated right away to go to the Valkyries. On normal mode, I'd be like, hell no. That's kind of where I was Hard like. enough mm, on baby ass BP. I, yeah, I, you I, can drop it down. I true. could. Oh, that was the other thing that was like. So yeah. I couldn't see the trophy list because it wasn't like total. It wasn't unlocked, right? Um, so I, in my head, I'm like, they probably have <clears> like <throat> a trophy tied to difficulty level because they usually do. I don't know if God of War usually does, but like a lot of video games do that. Yeah. So when you guys were like, drop the drop the game down, drop the game down, I was like, no, it's gonna ruin like the trophy, and I've already done, I've already come so far, and then there's no, there's no trophy, trophy for difficulty which is amazing. level. Thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you for not doing that because that's bullshit. Yeah, I agree. I was, but I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna flip a table, and then it didn't. Happen. I was like, oh fuck. Well, but and it was fine. Again, I did feel like normal balanced out um, fairly quick, like not fairly, like at least I always like. I'm like I'm not very good at percentages, but I'm like... Like halfway through? Like, no, earlier than that. A little earlier than that. 37%. It might be like a third of the way. Like a third, I struggled. 33 and a third percent of the and way then, through. And then I kind of like had leveled my things up more and I'd got better armor and the axe was upgraded and I was like, okay, yeah. now I can fight and not suck. feel like I'm going to be killed by a level five wolf. Yeah. I'm just reflecting. I remember when the game was debuted at E3 and everyone lost their shit. And I was like, oh, this looks pretty neat. I mean, this is kind of cool. And I hadn't been paying that much attention to it until you did your preview event and you were just gushing about it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to play it. But, you know, I'm not super. But it's just so crazy to think that's one of my favorite games ever. In the se Well, you know, I don't know. Okay, there's a difference between favorite games and, like, most polished game you've ever played. Most, like, well-constructed game you've ever played. Definitely. Mm. That's I'm what I would say. I want to say it's one of my favorite games. I would say it's one of the best games I've played. I yeah. think it can be. I Makes think it sense. can be both. Yeah. I think that there's nothing wrong with looking back through your history of, you know, the catalog of games that you've played throughout your entire life and going, what are the things that really have stuck with me mm -hmm. over time versus what are what is a like a, a pedestal type game that represents everything that video games strive to be and strive right. to do not only from like a storytelling perspective but also just from like a technical achievement um and i think that there's a way to recognize one or the other for example like i never really got into the story in gta 5 but i can recognize it for the technical achievement mm -hmm. that rockstar you know created with that game and clearly like the world over it's now like the most you know most financially successful video game of all time which is crazy to think about but i mean i think that there's there's a place for both mm -hmm. and it's even better when the game like hits both the technical achievement and becomes like an emotional favorite because you just like the game yeah yeah i was very pleasantly surprised by kratos as a character and his development and his arc. And, like, there was something that he kind of mentioned at the very end um, when he's fighting with Balder for the last time. And basically is, like, this path you've chosen will not give you peace. And I'm like, that, like, I don't know for what, whatever reason that line, I was like, oh, my God. Like, it was just, like, because throughout the entire history of Kratos, all he's done is try to exact revenge on people. And for him to be, like, 
you know what i try i've done this man i've been there i've been through this rodeo and <laughs> it is not going to help you whatsoever but then also i think it's true to like the fact that nobody you can't fix other people and you can't tell other people even through your own experience like you can't make them listen necessarily and balder obviously not up for listening <laughs> does not care even though of all the people to listen to kratos did kill one of his parents so uh, like but he doesn't he know killed his and wife he killed and his wife child. and child but that was like <laughs> he was in a weird he, he like, was tricked into he was doing tricked that. into doing matter. that their ashes are always on his skin man. whereas he very knowingly murders his father like knows what he's doing I mean, when he not does a oh, yeah, no, gruesome. it was gruesome uh, I, I don't know we don't ever come to the understanding that balder knows all of Kratos. No, he past, doesn't. Right? He doesn't. Um, I just meant as a player. You're like, no, seriously, listen to this guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I remember watching watching John play through the final scene because I had you know finished it before him, and him just being like, I don't understand why he still wants to kill Freya so bad. And I was like, yeah, but can you imagine though being in Baldur's position and just stewing? Mm -hmm. And like that, I think that scene in Helheim yes. really is impactful in that sense mm -hmm. where he's like calling himself a coward and being like, you he's should like have really, killed your mother yeah. so long ago. Yeah. And how have you let her do this to you? Like, mm -hmm. so he's been feeding this narrative to himself for over a hundred years. Yeah. So of course, when the moment comes that he can actually do it, he's not going to back down no matter mm -hmm. what. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I'm really glad, obviously, that Kratos stepped in. Because <laughs> I think Freya is a, a really great character. And I was really... It was it was hard to see her turn away from Atreus and Kratos the way she did. But Mimir was right in saying, like, you know, you've yeah. done the worst thing you could possibly ever do to her. Yeah. Yeah. You've taken away the thing that she, like, very specifically made a spell so it would never happen. Like, you... You did the you thing. You did the thing that she feared so much she ended up pushing her son away. Right. Which... So I think that's interesting mistletoe. because she did it obviously to to like you said to have him forever to like be like you are my boy I want you to be a part of my life for all eternity no matter what uh and then for you to just be like well no but then she also like she didn't have him right like she didn't have she hadn't had contact with him for years yeah like that that relationship was never going to heal so I I mean I under I mean I don't understand a mother a mother's tied to their child because I'm not a mother, but I kind of can maybe sort of like you can understand. maybe put, your, put yourself maybe in put, the shoes, maybe kind of. <laughs> uh, in that, regardless of whether or not they had a relationship, as long as he was alive, she had fulfilled her goal, right? And Not so, long. yeah, and then, yeah, just that, that, that scene where he's like choking her out, though. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. I was like. The she's idea like, that she's like on her knees being like, go ahead and kill me. I'm like, dude. Yeah. That's so fucked up. So fucked up. And then he's like, all right. Because like, nor like mm -hmm. you're I not know. even. Yeah. It's like, it's one thing to kill someone when they're fighting you and trying to kill you. It's quite another thing to kill someone when they are just like not doing anything. It's fucked up. That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Fucked up. Man. Any other parting thoughts? I never thought I would relate to Kratos as a character. Same. Yeah. He was great. I never thought... There were so many things about this game that surprised me. One, I don't really like God of War games. Two, I didn't like Kratos. Three, I don't like children. Four, I don't really care about family storylines. None of that mattered here. I loved this game. I loved the story arc. I loved the development. I loved so many things that they did and the way that they told the story and the way it all unfolded and even... What um, God of War games have often had like a really good sense of scale in terms of like their fights and all, all that kind of stuff. I like that they kept it in there, but it didn't necessarily relate to um, battles. I mean, obviously there were, you do fight big things, but just seeing the world snake kind of like chilling in the background as you're boating around, I just thought little things like that were yeah. so cool. Yeah, he's just like, hey man, what's up? I'm gonna breathe through my nostril. I'm just make gonna a weird like, sound. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna like eat this statue because why not? And then, you know, see, and then seeing like the side, like when you're kind of scaling the giants and mm -hmm. I don't know. I just thought they did a lot of really cool things. It was. Yeah. I loved it. I loved it. Great game. There's a reason. It's getting all the praises that it is. Do you think, final question, mm -hmm. that it will be able to beat Red Dead in the game of the year race? I think it might have a stronger narrative. Because I, I was just so impressed with how they've taken that character that was so 
one note so driven by one thing Mm -hmm. and kind of fleshed him out and matured him and made it more about a family unit yeah we were talking about this a little bit on the happy hour q a last night god of war it's not open world obviously but you can do exploration but everything in that game felt meaningful impactful anywhere you would go you'd have conversations with atreus and mimir aka head that would provide some sort of yeah (laughs) provide insight into the story so everything felt narratively driven uh it was fantastic the i think red dead redemption 2 is gonna be a phenomenal game as well um however you know you do like you're saying Simon, lose some of that narrative i think when you have such a large game is it going to feel as impactful obviously the first red dead redemption had a very impactful story i thought yes especially they did they did a very good job with that uh but they also kind of locked you like they Drove you through the open world in a certain way with Red Dead Redemption. And also, with, yeah, true. Another point is with God of War, people have such an emotional attachment with him already with Kratos and going into this and having such an emotional experience. If God, this God of War game just came out of nowhere, people would be like, okay, why should I care, you know? But with Red Dead, you're going to have so many different... I don't know. There's pros and cons because they're such different games. Well, we also have known nothing. We know nothing. We know nothing really about Red Dead yet. Right. You know nothing. Jimers. Jimers. I don't know. I feel like God of War is just purely <laughs> so magical, and I don't know if Red Dead can capture that magic. I think it'll have its own thing that God of War can't, but just because they're so different. I don't know. Apple makes well, me thinking about it's it. It's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Thank goodness for amazing video games, right, everybody? <laughs> right. <laughs> Brit's faces are my favorite. Um, Thank you so much for joining us on our God of War spoiler cast. We hope that you guys had some um, interesting, thought-provoking things to listen to. And if you guys have specific story beats that you're like, you totally forgot to talk about this thing, leave it in the comments below. Let's talk about it. Because this is a spoiler cast, obviously you can put spoilers in the comments. Um, And we'd love to to hear from you and hear what you thought about uh, the story yourself. So thanks so much for watching and listening. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye. Promotional copies of God of War were provided by Sony Interactive Entertainment.